welcome to this fly tying video. Today we're going to tie a scalping pattern and this is an articulate scalping using these scalping helmets. These ones are in size large and in olive. I will show you how to use them in a bit. The hook I have is a Partridge Universal Predator X. This one is in the size one oat and it goes well with these large scalping helmets. Then to make this articulated, I'm going to use this articulated shank from Fish Skull. This one is the 20 millimeter and is the smallest one. Then for the material we're going to put on this fly, I'm going to use some dubbing here, the SSS glitz, and this is for hotspot in the back and also a little color. Then to add a little bit more, I'm going to use these fly enhanced legs. These one are in orange, pumpkin, yellow. And it goes well with the whole color scheme. And then the main material is going to be this Tiger Bard Magnum rabbit strip. And this this light or is olive black bard over light olive. So it's a really nice sculpting color. And then for the front and the thorax or the pectoral fins and the head, as the sculpin have Sculpins have quite large heads, I'm going to use some laser dub, you could also use any other dubbing that builds up quite nicely. And then for the body I'm going to use some polar chenille, this one is in the color gold and this is going to give the sculpin a little lighter belly and also just give this nice shimmer. And then to get the sculpin head to stay in place I'm going to use some of this sap gel and I'm also going to use both this and this, this UV resin from Deer Creek, this one is the Fine Flex, and this I'm going to coat a little bit the front of the head, or the last thread wraps, and also the eyes, and I'm going to secure them with this as well. There will also be a whole material list in the description below, so if you missed something, just go check it out there, or I'll make one on the website as well. If we make a blog post about this fly, I'm going to link all the materials that you need. So here what I'm going to do is to start the thread just putting down a layer going back to about the barb of the hook and then back up again one time and then I'm going back down once again. This is going to give me a solid base to get all the materials to stay there. Then the first thing to do is to grab some of this dubbing and here you can just use any kind of dubbing that you like. I just think this one looks really really nice. This color is called Alta Gold. So I'm going to grab just a little bit and these fibers are quite long so what I'm going to do is to cut up all the ends and taper it just a little bit and then I'm going to tie this in about 50-50 here on the back and this one as most scalping, pa scalping patterns is going to ride upside down so you don't have to worry too much about getting materials here in in between or in the gap so here I'm then folding this back a few more turns to bind this down, there we have a little tail or a hot spot here at the back. And then I'm going to grab the polar chenille, this one in the color gold, goes really well with the alta gold little tail here. And just tie this in a few centimeters or so, and then up right to the eye or stay just an eye length behind the eye and this body is really simple it's only this and then polymer this right through touching turns and every three turn or so or every third turn or so give this a nice pull so you get out all the elasticity out of this chenille this way it won't break as easily. And here I'm just polymering it forward and for every turn just 
pull back all the fibers so you don't bind these down with the next turn. And then once you reach the thread, just put a 90 degree band in to the chenille and tie it off with some quite hard turns. I didn't mention it, but the thread I'm using is a 100 denier GSP from Vivas. So then just cut off the excess and bind this down. And there we have this nice body starting to form. And for this next step it's a little bit easier if you have your vise on the horizontal. I just forgot to change that. But now what we're going to do is to flip this upside down. And here we can just pull or make a little space here on the top, pulling most of the fibers down. So this is going to be the belly of our sculpin with this little gold tail. And then I'm taking my Tiger Bard Magnum Rabbit Strip in this olive color. And here what I'm going to do is to measure out about two times the length of the shank. And this is going to be the length of this piece that we're going to take. So just cut it off. And here you can either leave it flat or square here at the back. I just like to cut it to a point just think it moves a little bit better this way and then we're going to measure out about the length or the length from this tying point and the back of the hook and when you find this I'm just going to poke right through the middle with the point of the hook There we go. Then take it out of your vise and adjust this. And then we're going to try to get it back in the vise again. And flat if possible. There we go. And now we have our rabbit strip attached at the back. And now the only thing left to do is to attach it in the front. So I'm just going to pull a little bit, not too much, we don't want to tear this up here at the back. And holding this, I'm just going to make a few turns, pulling quite hard. And then lift up this little piece, make a few turns underneath. Then come in with your scissors and cut this away. And here we don't have to be too precise here. We just want a nice open eye on the hook. But for all the rest, this is going to be the back hook, so nobody is going to see this. But if you would like to tidy up a little, just a little bit, feel free to take a few more turns. Then what I'm going to do is to whip finish. Pull tight, cut off your thread. And there we have the back hook done. I'm just going to secure this rabbit strip with a little bit of UV resin just coating it all over and sap it with light and now for the front part I'm going to take one of these articulated shanks and this is just a shank with one closed eye in one end and one open on the other so we'll get the open one through the eye of the hook and there we have our articulation 
and then I'm just going to reattach it in the vise and here if you have one of these little hair clips it can be quite handy to get this little hair piece stuck so the back hook won't move on you then reattach your thread just starting here and then what we're going to do first is to close this back eye and this is really easy with the GSP as you can put a whole lot of force right down in your turns but it's quite slippery so you have to be a little bit careful and then I'm going to spin my thread and as Gunnar Brammer said in one of his videos this will increase the micro topography of the thread and hopefully make it stay a little bit better and then what I want to do is to go back a little bit in this space here and just close off this eye a little more so the back hook can't come too much forward and fall into the other one and there we go we just want it to be able to come to a vertical state and not go any further and then a few more heavy turns to really secure this and then I suggest you take one of these scalping helmets and just see how long or how far back this is going to be so here we can see that this is going to extend quite far in this shank so we'll be have to be a little bit careful about how many or how much material we put right here but the idea is to put quite a lot and then put this on and then push back making this nice white color on the fly so what I'm going to do here right at the back I'm going to take a marker and first of all color this thread so nobody can see that it's white nobody will ever see this but I will know that I have this olive little spot here at the back and it will make me happy then I'm going to take just a little bit more of this SSS dubbing but this time I'm going to tear it into smaller pieces and make like a little bowl out of it and let it fall on the table then I'm going to push this over so we get it about around the whole shank here a few turns then pull everything back and here if you have a dubbing brush or something like that you can just brush out a few of these trapped fibers we can then also go through with the scissors just to get all these loops but there we have a nice little color here on the fly then I'm going to take the rep strip again and this time it's going to be a little bit shorter or a lot shorter I just want it to extend to about the part where this the back one starts and then as I showed before the scalping helmet is going to come back to about here so we just want it to go a little bit further than that so here just cutting cutting away a little piece and this and then I'm going to bind down and there we have a nice little transition from the back hook to the front one and then we can check again with the scalping helmet and this seems quite nice uh, there you can see and then I'm going to cover up or fill this space with the two last materials and this is going to be some rubber legs and some lace it up so I'm going to cut away 
two rub legs. And here you have a few different ways to tie these in. The easiest I've found, or the one I've practiced, is to find the center here around the nozzle of the bobbin and then just get them right on top with one turn. Then I'm going to grab the one that's the furthest away from me and get it to your side and then get mine to my side. Then one turn more and then fold these back and just quite loose turns over to get them to stay in place. And for now we can leave these a little bit longer and just grab them with this little clip here at the back. Then we're going to cut these to length. Then laser dub. This is one of my favorite materials. You can do all kinds of heads with these ones. Here it's going to um, represent the mostly the pectoral fins of the scalping. And we have a little image here of a scalping and you can see that they have really big heads and really big pectoral fins. So we'll push a lot of water and this the same with this one. Here I'm going with a brown laser dub. You could also go with an olive or mix a few different colors. And this is what I'm going to do on this one, sorry. But I'm going to add just a little bit more laser dub and this one is in the color white. I think this will look just a little bit better. So what I'm going to do is to start here on the underside and also this dubbing is going to cover up all things that you've tied in before and all these not so nice looking stuff. So I'm just going to take this first white one and this is going to be on the underside. And what I'm doing here is to pull this apart and then back together again. And this is going to align all the fibers and also make them about the same length. And here for the first clump I'm going to spread this out on the underside. One, two turns, pull tight. Then flip your vise over. This looks good. Then I'm going to take the brown one and I'm going to add a little bit more brown than the white. And I've done the same thing. Just align all these fibers. And I'm going to do the same on the top. Try to get a nice spread of the materials and then pull tight. And then hook yourself on the back hook and pull back the laser dub, both the upper and underside. And we can brush this back just a little bit. And then check how it will look or how it will look once we've put on the scalping head. So it seems quite nice. I just want this profile to be a little bit wider. So what I'm going to do is to add two clumps more of this laser dub. And here I'm taking the brown one again and I'm going to apply this to the sides this time. And keeping this quite bundled together. So first on my side and then I'm going to flip the vise over and take the same amount and I'm going to apply this on the underside and then I'm going to fold back these parts that are sticking out towards the front as well and then here we can have a look again how it will look with the scalping head and now it seems really nice
It's a nice white profile and also quite thick here in front so the scalping helmet will have somewhere to grab onto and then just a whip finish four turns or so, pull tight cut away your thread and then to get this head to stay on there I'm going to take some sap gel and I'm just going to fill this little cavity here in the head and what the gel is going to do is that it's not going to sink in the, to the materials, it's going to stay on top I've just put a little blob of super glue right inside the head and then you have to move in one continuous motion and push this on and at the same time I'm going to take away all the excess just make sure that you get it far enough so you can put your leader through and if you feel like you have a little bit too much laser dub it's really easy to just tear a little bit away and these scalping helmets come directly with the eyes so these are directly fitted to match the grooves in the helmets so I'm just going to put two dots of super glue right in these little sockets and then with the dubbing needle I'm going to apply one eye at a time and these are quite secure as they are right now but I'm going to add just a thin coat of this UV resin from Deer Creek just cover the whole eye and fill in this little socket and then with light cure the resin and then I'm going to reattach my thread right here in front as well so I'm just going to build a little thread down so the head can't move any further and before we're finishing I'm just going to color my thread in olive and then I'm just going to add a small drop of UV resin to the thread wraps in front as well the last thing to do is to grab the four legs don't pull them too tight and I'm going to cut these away just the length of the back hook and there we have this articulated sculpting thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already see you next time and happy time